UNLV soccer in the pros. UNLV Rebel soccer has a long tradition of success on the soccer field, both at the collegiate level and also sending several players on to professional ranks, uh, either as a player, coaching profession, or other areas. So today we're talking with six of our alumni who currently uh, have a career in the soccer field. Now, before I let our six introduce ourselves, uh, we want to take a quick second to recognize our current men's head soccer coach, Rich Ryerson, as he did just announce this week that this upcoming season in the fall will be his uh, 12th and final season at UNLV. He will be retiring after uh, 12 great outstanding years at UNLV, several conference championships. So we just wanted to take this time to recognize uh, Coach Ryerson for his outstanding career, both as a player and coach at UNLV. So thanks, Coach. And now I'll go ahead and send it off to you. So Coach Ryerson, if you'll go ahead, introduce yourself, uh, talk both about what your current career is and what you've done as a pro, and then send it on to the next. Okay, uh, my name is Rich Ryerson, I'm the current head coach for the UNLV men's soccer team, as Mark said, in my final season. So uh, we hope we go out with a bang in the WAC conference and uh, make the NCAA tournament. Uh, that's always our goal. Uh, as a player, I played here at UNLV in the early 80s, and then I went on to play in Sweden and in the various uh, uh, leagues that were available to us, indoor and outdoor, during the 90s. Uh, so I had a, a, about a 10-year career myself, and um, that's about it. I'm happy to see uh, everybody on this call. Uh, really happy to see the success that they're having uh, as they're pursuing their dreams and the careers as well. So, Jen, I guess I'll send it over to you, Jen. All right, my name is Jenny, current head coach here at UNLV and a former run and rebel with the women's program. Um, played for the Mexican national team um, in three Pan Americans, one World Cup, um, and played in the National Women's Soccer League with Seattle Reign. Um, so that's a little bit of my playing background. And Mark, who's next? Who should we kick it to? Let's go with uh, Denali. Find my unmute button. Uh, hi guys, I am Denali Mernan. I played for UNLV from 2011 to 2016 with a red shirt year in there in the middle. Um, since then, I have been playing all over Europe uh, from north to south, all over uh, five seasons, four teams. I am currently on a season off uh, recovering from an injury, and I plan to be back out on the field here in mm, half a year-ish, probably. And uh, I don't really know what the future has for me, but maybe back in Europe, um, maybe here in the States. Uh, where should we go? Over to MJ? Yes, let's go now to Macy Joe. Cool. All right, can you guys hear me? My connection says it's unstable. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So my name is Macy Joe Harrison. I played at UNLV from 2009 through 2012. I transferred my freshman year. Looks like Macy Joe might be a little stuck. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and go on to Joaquin and then see if we can get Macy Joe uh, uh, connections working. Hey, I'm Joaquin Rivas. Um, played at UNLV 2010 to 2013. Um, since then, I've been playing in the USL Championship for my seventh year now. Um, in three clubs, Sacramento Republic, Tulsa Roughnecks, and St. Louis. And now I'm back in FC Tulsa. Um, got called up. My first call up with the El Salvador national team was in 2018. and um, I'm currently in it as well and trying to qualify for the World Cup. So I think that's uh, it for me as far as uh, my career was. Danny? I'm Danny Masofsky. Um I played at UNLV from 2014 to 2017. Um, I was drafted by the Earthquakes um, and then was loaned out pretty much in the USL for – two seasons I played at Reno 1868 and then uh, now this is my second year with LAFC. 
And Macy Jill, let's try you again, see if the connection's good. I hate technology. Um, my name is Macy Jill Harrison, and I played at UNLV from 2009 to 2012. I transferred my freshman year into UNLV from Oregon State at the beginning of my sophomore year, actually. And then I ended up up here in Seattle. I had the opportunity to train with the Seattle Rain FC for two seasons, which was a great experience. And then from there, I had a job at the Issaquah Soccer Club Gunners. And I coach four teams here, and I'm currently the director of soccer operations for this club here. Perfect. And I realized I didn't introduce myself. I'm the longtime soccer SID here, Mark Wasik, and I actually was SID for five of the players and coach on this call because I was here for Jenny's uh, one or two seasons for Jenny as well. And obviously, I've worked with Coach Ryerson ever since he's come back as the head coach. So let's go ahead and move on to our first question. And this will be for everyone. So we'll the coaches uh, start answering this one. And this question is from Manuel. Talk about how playing soccer at UNLV prepared you for your current career. If it was a player, administrator, or coach, what was the biggest challenge in transitioning from the college to the professional level? Rich, if you want to start. Sure. Um, it's It's been a great, from a player at UNLV to a coach at UNLV, uh, every time I cross the field on game day with the Las Vegas Strip in the background, that's uh, that's the most incredible thing I think for me as a coach. Uh, you know, that's uh, I guess bringing back memories as a player, and uh, you know, just seeing that view and being there where there's so much energy for the guys before the game. So uh, I enjoy that. Game day is something else. Experience is great. Um, as far as transitioning from college soccer into the professional game. Um, I think really it's, uh, it's just the discipline to do the things that you need to do to, to stay healthy and strong, uh, to be prepared when you're called on. You got to be able to cross that line. You can have a great time up until you get to that line. As soon as you cross the line, it's time to play. You better be ready to play. So I think uh, consistency and, and, and just really doing the right things uh, with a dis disciplined lifestyle. I think that was the biggest thing. Jenny, if you would like... Uh, Try the answer, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. I think that when you play at UNLV, it prepares you to go beyond because you're representing a city, right? And you're representing support staff and you're representing a community. And when you go on to play for a national team, it's the same thing, you're representing a country. When you play pro, you're representing a city, a franchise, and, and so many people. There's someone in the stands that you're, you're literally living their dream. Right, so it's an ex it's an exciting place to be, and UNLV prepares you that way because you become so ingrained in the community, and you learn how to represent, and you're responsible for for who you are on and off the field. So I think that helps you prepare to be a pro. Now, Macy Joe, you're more an administrator role. Um, how, how did your time at UNLV prepare you for your current position, and, and what ex what exactly things do you do in your current role as well? Oh, um, UNLV prepared me just having to be organized in time management, um, you know, taking exams on the road proctored or things like that, having to miss classes and just figuring that out organizationally. Um, what I currently do in my role is everything behind the scenes from scheduling to tournament planning, um, travel policies, all of our teams travel as it, like you do in college. That's how we do it with our club. Um, registrations background checks. I do all of that stuff. Um, so yeah, that's how it helped me. Time management, being organized. Now, Joaquin and Danny, you're both currently playing. Uh, Joaquin, obviously you spent a lot of time in the USL. Danny, you're currently in MLS with LAFC. Um, same question. What was the biggest challenge for you transitioning from uh, playing college soccer to playing at the professional ranks? Um, I think with me, it was, uh, you know, he just helped me mature really into the real world, I would say, um, mentally and physically. I think uh, just mentally was like being able to like manage all the training sessions and every every morning being able to wake up and then at the same time you're having to go to class and stuff like that. And then physically like 
it's not easy doing that at the same time, you know, with all the stress that's in there and mentally, like, you're just like, you're mean to physically drain, but at the same time, you're, when it, when you're put in all those situations, then you realize, okay, like I have to dedicate myself to this. And if you really want it, then I think the transition made it a lot easier when I actually became a pro and stuff like that, because I was already doing that for years with, you know, so that definitely helped me a lot. Danny, same question. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd agree with a lot with what everybody said. Um, for me, a lot of it comes down to the individual. So like, like Joaquin said, you know, he was doing all those things for four years. So then when he transitioned to play professional, the transition was a bit easier. And I would say that would be the same for me, you know, because I was trying to act like a professional before I even like became technically a professional. So it, a lot of it comes down to the individual, you know, if you're playing college soccer and you're not really taking it seriously and you're not being disciplined and, and focused, then of course, if you do make that transition to play professional soccer, it's either going to be really hard and you won't last long or, um, or you could, you know, take the other route and just be focused and disciplined. So I say that's the biggest difference is that maybe in college you have your coaches and uh, resources there to keep you focused and, you know, keep your head down. But when you're in the pros, there's nobody doing that for you. You have to do it yourself. And if you're not going to do it, then you're just not going to be playing professional very long. Now, Denali, I'm going to switch up the question a little for you. You're the only one that's currently playing overseas. You've played your entire career overseas. So not only talk about your transition from, you know, V to professional, but what was it like transitioning from playing in the States to playing overseas? And what's that experience been like for you? Uh, so that was kind of going to be my answer to the transition <laughs> anyways. Uh, I would say the biggest transition would be playing in a country where you don't speak the same language as everyone on the field. <laughs> so uh, in most countries that I've played in, not only do uh, they have locals, so whatever language is local to that country, but then we also have players from all over the world. So there's multiple languages on each field. Um, so I would say that was my biggest transition for sure is language. There's also different styles of play. Uh, one thing that UNLV did to help me kind of prepare for that was that was actually kind of like a negative thing that I was able to twist into a positive thing, which was I had four, I was, I had, I was coached by three different coaches at UNLV and I was recruited by a fourth. So in the moment, I thought that was a really negative thing for me, but with each coach came a new kind of uh, playing style. And so when I hop from country to country, I'm able to adapt really easily and kind of like morph into a different style of play on the field, which, um, you know, I attribute to having so many coaches at UNLV. And, uh, and I also think that a couple of my coaches did a really good job at UNLV of kind of forcing us to get out of our comfort zones. As far as when we travel, we had to stay with um, maybe someone on the team that wasn't our best friend or we didn't know very well to get to know each other better. We had a lot of kind of team building events that our coaches put together for us. And I think that that really helped me in other countries where I would go and not know a single player and sometimes not speak the same language as anyone on my team. And I was able to take those skills I learned from the four or five years I had at UNLV and really just like apply them uh, to every situation I was in. Uh, I also wanted to agree with Jenny that uh, UNLV did a really good job of creating a community where we did lots of um, giving back to the city, uh, some community service things, a lot of uh, uh, camps, things like that. And that is a huge part of playing professionally. You, your fan, like you're playing for your fans of that city. And it is a daily thing that we have to do professionally over in Europe. And uh, UNLV really prepared me well for that. Um, even I, I, I also played basketball at UNLV. And I would say I definitely learned a lot from those camps and uh, what we did with the basketball team as well. So both, both soccer and basketball. Thank you, Denali. And now we're going to go to our first uh, prize of the afternoon. Elizabeth Leon wins the first prize of the day. 
uh, you will receive a Nike game ball and a women's uh, UNLV soccer jersey. So congratulations, Elizabeth, and we'll have one more to give out. Um, now let's go to the next question. And this one is for Joaquin and uh, Jenny. Both of you have played for your national teams, uh, El Salvador and Mexico. What did it mean to you to represent your countries? How did it feel when you stepped out on the field for the first time? Uh, Jenny, if you want to go first. I was going to send it to Joaquin. Uh, can... I'll, I'll do it. Um, you, it's so fresh for you. You're about, you're going to qualify. I'm a baby. Here. I'm a baby. <laughs> no, um, obviously, it's, I mean, it, it's an honor. I mean, as a, as a kid, that's, that's something that you dream about, you know, but uh, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I can't really describe it, honestly. It's a feeling that, like, you would have to experience it yourself to like be able to know exactly what it means but definitely like an honor and then the pressure I, would, I want to talk about the pressure because it's totally different from like from playing club to national team because it's either like with the national team they either hate you or love you like you could you know it, the pressure is so much different from when you're on, in the field and you could literally feel it when you're in that crowd and whatnot like playing and but it's it's also an amazing feeling at the same time when a whole country is is behind you and stuff like that and you're playing for really for pride so yeah it's sim similar um how he described how it's undescribable i i feel equally the same because when i the the, the pivotal moment of my career was the world cup and that's like when you're a kid you're like play fifa and like, I'm always trying to put myself and no one like whatever dream that you would get there. Cause it's every four years and everything has to match up and you got to make, you got to qualify and you got to make the roster and you got to make sure you're not injured. And, and then the moment comes and you step on the field and you're playing in the world cup. Like that is like, I felt like I could like walk off after retire, like make my grave. I'm done. Like I lived it. Um, it's so special. So I, even now when I watch any sort of like as we get down the line for more competitions with the World Cup, it's just, it's so exciting. The next question we have is for Coach Ryerson. Rich, you played overseas after you graduated from UNLV. You've already mentioned this, a couple seasons in Sweden, and then you came back to the States and played in the Eastern Indoor Soccer League. What was the highlight for you during those times, both in Sweden and then when you played here professionally uh, before you moved into coaching? I think a, a big thing uh, for me is actually the, the opportunity that you have through the sport to immerse yourself in a new culture, uh, in the international side of things, uh, to see how another country is actually looking at the United States uh, day in and day out and how we're perceived in another culture. I think that was... Uh, that was always fun about being abroad. Um, also just the travel itself, uh, you know, playing in Sweden, getting to go down into Greece, going into Spain, going into France and those countries. And, and it was because of soccer that I had those opportunities. Uh, so I think that carried also into the various leagues that I played in the United States as well. It gave me an opportunity to see a perspective. I was raised in Maryland, uh, lived in California, and I had a chance to play in Indianapolis and in Baton Rouge and some of these other cities that I probably would not have uh, been fortunate enough to play in. Um, so, so I think travel and then understanding other cultures, I think are the two big takeaways for me. Our next question is for Danny. And um, just talk about, you, you've been drafted in 2018 by San Jose, but you really had your breakout year last year with LAFC. Uh, you had a great end of the summer. I believe you had a MOS player of the week. Um, just, just talk about how it all came for you last summer, how it came together for you. Um, and I also wanted to pass on a quick note from uh, Jack in Las Vegas. Uh, uh, obviously we saw that you'll be playing for the lights tonight. So uh, a lot of local fans are excited and he just wanted to pass on, he can't wait to score for our city again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Good luck in your game tonight and, and just talk about how uh, last summer went for you with LAFC. Um, well, first of all, thanks to Jack for that. Um, uh, yeah, how did last year 
Well, last year I came into a little bit of a difficult situation with COVID going on in the world. And so like that made the MLS season weird. It made, it made every season weird for every league around the world. Um, so I came in, yeah, not even, I was probably the third string, third string striker, like on our team, there was other people ahead of me. And, um, and then like, luckily through a couple of injuries and more moments to play, I just got onto the field and was able to get opportunities. And then I was able to score a couple goals and, and prove myself on this level. And then it became to where I was regularly either starting or getting in off the bench. So um it all kind of happened pretty fast but throughout all of it I was just trying to stay mentally ready I was noticing that a lot of players were handling the pandemic and the difficult times differently some were you know struggling a bit and kind of they weren't playing as well as they could be so I just tried to always stay ready and train well and and if I got the opportunity to get on the field was to try to score and yeah like I was always dreaming about playing in the MLS and playing at this level. And, um, and yeah, I just wanted to be ready when that time came. Well, you obviously had a great year last year and we hope it continues this year. Um, I also do want to point out to our, you know, be soccer fans uh, watching right now. Uh, I believe Joaquin, uh, one of his goals from last week is up for goal of the week in USL. So make sure you go to the USL uh, website and vote for Joaquin for best goal of the week. Uh, it was a strong game for you last week. Two goals, I believe, right? Right, yeah. Um, so and thanks to if you did vote. <laughs> <laughs> so a good start for the year for you. Um, let's see. The next question is, this will be for the two coaches and Macy Joe. Um, actually, no, I need to – hold on. Sorry. This one is for the players, and then we'll go to the U3. So for the players, uh, so we'll start with Denali, then Joaquin, then Danny. After your professional careers, your professional playing careers, what do you see as the next step? What would you like to do? Do you want to stay in the sport of soccer or do you have other plans? Uh, Denali, we'll go with you first. So I want to stay uh, involved in soccer in a little bit of a different way. Uh, I'm a little bit more interested in those, those who kind of know my history know that I'm super into fitness and um, strength and conditioning. And so I do want to be involved with athletes, uh, probably specifically soccer players, on the strength and conditioning, speed, agility, weight training side of things, nutrition a little bit. Uh, so I do want to be involved with soccer, but not directly coaching a team. Uh, lots of like individual training and maybe being a strength and conditioning coach at a college one day, like the the people that influenced me so much as like when I was in at UNLV so yeah that's the plan Joaquin would you like to go next uh sure yeah um haven't really thought about this much honestly because obviously like I feel great and I want to keep playing as much as I can um but uh as far as coaching I don't think I could ever coach I don't know I'm just not like I just love playing too much I, that's just how my dad was as well I think I'm the same exact way I mean he's 62 and he's still playing so I'm not saying I'm gonna do that but hopefully I do but as far as uh but I definitely would want to be like involved in like you know and still try and help out and whatever whatever position I would be able to but um or maybe even like a social work. I love I love uh, helping out people as well. I mean, like especially the ones that definitely need it. And um, I think I could see myself doing that in the future and whatnot. But uh, but we'll see. Hopefully, may maybe I'll start thinking about that soon. We could talk about it later. <laughs> but as far as now, like it's just not in, really in my mind. Hey, so you're still at the start of your plan, but do you ever have thoughts about what you might do? Uh, after you're done playing? I'm kind of like Joaquin on this one, man. I'm just, <laughs> um, I'm just focused on my career right now. I mean, it is something to think about. I think maybe in some capacity, I'd always like to be involved in so you know, with soccer in some way. Um, but the positive I could say is like through soccer, I've been granted a lot of opportunities to grow as a, as a player and especially as a person. I think Rich touched on it earlier just playing 
different places, meeting all types of different people. You just learn a lot of great, valuable life skills. And I think I'm still in the process of that. I'm 25 years old, so I do plan on playing a lot longer. But still, I think no matter where life takes me after I'm done playing soccer, I feel like I'll be equipped with a lot of good skills, um, you know, and just then deciding on what I want to pursue after that, I think I'll set a good foundation for myself. So yeah, for right now, it's a little too early to say for sure, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Danny, Danny, do you think you might get involved with refereeing? I think <laughs> that, uh, it seems like uh, maybe the experiences that you've had might give the opportunity to, to really grow and and uh, you can start that now. You can start taking courses right now while you're playing. No, no I'll stay away from refereeing and everything that has to do with that. It seems like too much drama for me, getting yelled at by everybody. So <laughs> stick to playing or coaching. <laughs> Probably the safer choice. Uh, <laughs> this next question is will be for uh, Macy Joe and the two coaches. We'll start with Macy Joe first. Um, but what programs or training would you recommend for young players to help prepare them uh, to try to play at the college and professional level? Oh, I could start with saying that when I went to college, I was not equipped for the strength and conditioning programs that we were put through. So I would highly recommend that for the older players. I um, you know, like the high school age group players, strength and conditioning, speed and agility, and then just a lot of technical work, playing as much soccer as you can. I think that those would be the most important things for me to recommend for players and understanding that when you get to college, you might not start. I think that was a big thing for, for me, at least at Oregon state, my freshman year, you go from your club teams where you're, you know, one of the stars on the team. And then you go into this college environment with all of these older players and you're kind of shell shocked. So just being prepared for those types of situations as well would be for me. Jenny. Um, first, I just have to say how amazed I am by these four former Rebels. I think that they are like perspiring humility, and I'm really in awe by all of them. Um, so I just have to say that, that I'm enjoying listening from this vantage point over here. Um, I think I'm going to agree 100% with Macy Joe. You have to not be content with whatever your ability level is. Like if you can juggle x amount of numbers like it's not good enough it has to be more you have to love the ball you got to go outside you have to be on the ball you have to be fit you have to hit all the pillars of of being excellent and you can never i mean that's what's made i'm looking at the four squares of these former rebels that's what made them excellent i guarantee that they have crazy stories of them in the ball by themselves and that's why they're where they are and rich I, i've got a little I guess maybe different thought also. I think it's important to cross train in different sports. And so Denali was a basketball player as well. And, and I think passing angles in basketball, very similar to in the soccer game as well. And, and I think uh, the balance coordination that you get from multiple sports, I think uh, helps create a, a more complete athlete. Uh, you've got to be athletic. You've got to be fast. The strength training agree a hundred percent, but I think uh, also, um, at a younger age, not just uh, pigeonholing yourself in one sport. I think it's important to, to explore other sports and play, enjoy it, find a love and passion for sport, and then start channeling that, you know, as you're aging into uh, the college years, if it's soccer. Okay, before we next go to our next question, we have our next uh, prize winner of the day. So this one will be a uh, Nike game ball and a UNLV men's soccer jersey. And this winner is Darla. So congratulations, Darla. You are the winner of a new Nike game ball and UNLV men's soccer jersey. So um, now this question is for everyone. What is What was your favorite UNLV soccer memory from your career as a Rebel? And it can be either as a player or as a coach. Um, coaches, I'm going to send it to you two first. Uh, Jenny, Rich, who wants to who wants to try that one? You got Rich. That's a that's a. I want to hear from you. Twelve years. And he's got four more years as a player yeah, too. That's sixteen yeah, years ago. I think I had about eighty four games of memories too. So uh, you know, I think uh, a lot of things. I, I I would have to say the for me as a 
probably the best memory was in 2014. And uh, after all of the years that we would work so hard from Joaquin's first year up until 2014, when the guys won the, the championship in penalty kicks, uh, great story. We, you know, uh, um, we were up in Seattle. It was the last penalty kick. Uh, Ryan Harding, our goalkeeper, who had to sit out the year prior uh, with some health issues, uh, makes the save, and, and we win the, the championship up in Seattle. And, uh, and it was just very satisfying at that point. I, I mean, just a, a great feeling of accomplishment. I was so proud of the guys at that moment. I would have to say that I turned, and I think I hugged uh, the trainer, Bernie Chavez, and uh, held on to him for a little while. And that, that embrace is probably one of the best memories, too. Jenny? Mine, I really, I, I couldn't pick one from my playing days. Um, although I have so many, I loved playing for our coach, Dan Abdalla, who also was a former run and rebel. But mine is just recent. Obviously, I've only been here one year, but um, kind of going back to the fear I just saw in Joaquin's eyes when you asked him about what's next. And he's like, I don't think I could coach. I feel so good. I want to keep playing. Coaching. The old, there's these moments where you feel you feel it like that that game winning. So we had two games this year where we went to overtime, and in college, which is different than is you have the golden goal, which is another topic. But those moments, like you feel like I have to hold myself back because I want to run on and like dog pile, and I feel like I'm a player again. I'm like, oh, keep it cool, Jenny. You know, your coach now. Um, but those are my favorite memories right now. So they're brand new memories that I've got tucked away right here. I love them. Let's go to Macy Jo next. Oh man, I have some great memories as a player, but I would have to agree with Jenny. The most memorable moments that I have are as a coach. And I think even in the, like the little kids, right? I coach four teams currently. I'm a full-time coach as well as my director of soccer ops position. So. I coach those young ones, the little ones, and they just improve so quickly. And when you teach them just a simple move, like a scissor, and they go out on the field and they're eight years old and they're doing a scissor beating players, those moments really drive you as a coach, I think. And those are the most memorable ones for me, just seeing well, the um, development. What would you say, though, was your top uh, memory from playing with UNLV? There's so many. I don't know if I could pick one. Um, Jeez. I would say we played against Oklahoma. Yeah, this is a good memory. We played against Oklahoma and it was double overtime, golden goal. Denali, you probably remember this. And I hit a free kick and Julie, now Julie Peterson, used to be Julie Owens. She scored a header and we won in the double overtime golden goal against Oklahoma. We were clearly the underdogs and we dogpiled and it was just one of those celebrations. But I relive that memory often in my head. So I guess there is a good one there. I do remember that game. I've obviously been at a lot of those games. Uh, Joaquin, let's, let's hear from you next. I'm going to have to choose two just because, well, the first one was my, I believe it was my first game as a freshman. You know, like I know you mentioned that sometimes you don't even know if you're going to play this and that. And obviously I, I started that game and it was their, the home opener in Stanford at their brand new field. And I scored the, for, in the, in the game winner in the overtime. And then obviously we dogpiled this and that. Uh, so it was just like the rush. I was just like, dang, like, this is what it feels like, you know, like, like this is going to be great. Um, and then my second one was I, my last, so senior night, my last home game at UNLV, um, at that year I was going through a high ankle sprain. So I think that was my first game back. I'm not sure, coach, if you remember. I My ankle was the size of a golf yeah. ball. And I, yeah. I remember I ended up scoring two goals that game. And then I, it was just like, dang, like, you don't realize how fast, like, those four years fly and, like, how, like, it's, like, literally a blink of an eye, but it's just like you – you remember every single practice, every single day, and how like how fun it was and stuff like that. But uh, it flies by, so definitely enjoy all those like moments, you know. Like, but I would say those two were mine. Uh, let's go to Denali next. 
so I've had some time to think about this and I still have a really hard time just picking one. Uh, if I'm going to be honest, I think my most memorable moment or moments are just like with the team, uh, probably two specific kind of scenarios. One would probably be fitness tests. The camaraderie that happens with the team during fitness tests are just, it's just insane. It kind of gives me goosebumps to think about it. Um, everybody just picking each other up and pushing each other and um, just not only fitness tests, but just all the hard times. So whether it's like three days during preseason or, you know, ice baths every day, whatever it is, when you're kind of in the thick of it with like your sisters and your family, it's just creates this bond that you can never recreate and never forget. It's just, it's a family. Um, so kind of any of those moments, also traveling uh, like bus trips or flights where you just get to really know people um, and just create those strong bonds. If I were to pick one soccer, like on the field moment, it would be, I can't remember the year, but in our final game against Reno, uh, Jen Wolf, be, uh, scored a goal from like midfield <laughs> and it, uh, I think it won us the game and it was in the last couple minutes and I just like I think I cried I think I got so emotional and was so happy she she literally struck the ball from midfield and um, when she scored she just puts her arms up in the air and everyone just like dog piles her it was insane and it was so exciting so that would be my one moment on the field. That was such a memorable moment. We, we definitely had a picture of that and we used it so much over the next year. So oh, it was amazing. It was very great win for UNLV that day. Um, and then Danny, you'll close us out with this question. Okay. Um, first of all, I don't know how Denali just said fitness tests were one of her favorite memories. <laughs> so she must love fitness built different. Um, and for Joaquin, I was actually watching Joaquin for his game when he's at the senior night game, I was in high school at that time. So that's funny that one of his favorite memories, I was watching that one in the stands. Um, my favorite memory, and I do agree with the Nolly though, definitely like the camaraderie and on the bus, like when you're just chatting with teammates, that's probably like not a singular moment, but it's definitely one of some of the best memories is just with your teammates and, and experiencing that for sure. Um, but if I had to pick one singular moment, of like satisfaction of my college career would probably be when we won the 2016 WAC championship um, just because of how that year went. And um, it wasn't necessarily a great year where everything was like, like in 2014 when we were extremely dominant, we were kind of up and down that season. And then when it came to the WAC championship, we just won all three of the games in the tournament and, uh, and won it. And it was just like such like a, huge feeling of satisfaction that like I literally that's like one moment in my life where I can't describe that in words because it was just so much went into it and then to come out and and win the way that we did it was a special feeling okay now we have looks like one last question and this is going to be for the two coaches um, and this one is from Tim um, and the question is what do you enjoy the most about coaching college soccer? Uh, let's start with Jenny first. I need think time. Um, the I I love these stories that everyone's sharing, and I hope that 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 to me is what I enjoy the most is the human aspect um, of developing young women and the beyond and the what's next and the dream and fulfilling dreams. Um, and seeing someone come in one way a freshman year and changing. I think that's the most fulfilling. That's the most enjoyable part. I think uh, it fills my, my bucket. And it's, I guess it's my turn. And I would say uh, uh, building the relationships with the guys uh, for me is, is, I think, kind of like what Jen was just saying. The, the, uh, when Danny and I speak now on the side, <clears throat> We, we laugh, we have such a good time. And, and I think, you know, it's, uh, you know, the relationships that we've built over the years that we have the players, because it's not professional. We're, we're not in a position to say, if you don't play well, I'm getting the next player. 
So we have the chance to learn how to motivate the guys differently. And, and they all take different, you know, triggers to, to help them move along. But I think for me, it's, it's all about the relationships and, and how, how do we build the trust with one another and, and, uh, and, and just build, I think that uh, camaraderie we talk about and, um, and then take that through life. I mean, it's now I've got 12 years of guys that have, you know, are, are coming back and, and it's great to see Joaquin. And I remember that Stanford game like it was yesterday. And, you know, and uh, again, his career was great. Danny's career was great. These guys represented so well. And to watch them now move on and represent us, you know, in the professional ranks. I remember watching Denali, you know, play as well. I mean, just um, it, it's really amazing. Um, uh, just a great feeling as we're seeing these guys go off and, and do the things that they're the great things they're doing, not only in soccer, but we have players doing everything in the city of Las Vegas, all around the country doing some just fantastic things. And we were a small part of their life. It does go in the blink of an eye. I always try and remind those guys at the beginning of the season that this is going to go before you know it. So let's get it right, right away. And, um, you know, but it does go, it does go quick. But I want to thank these guys for being on all, all four, just like Jen said, it's great to hear them speak to us as well. And then before we end today, uh, coaches, we're just going to hear from you one last time. Just uh, tell our fans um, what they can expect from the teams. Um, this fall season, 2021, where we'll be back to a normal schedule, uh, back to the regular time in the fall. Uh, what can the Rebel fans expect from UNLV men's and women's soccer 2021? Let's start with you, Rich. Um, it's a secret. No, I'm kidding. We, uh, I'm looking for, we, we've got actually just such, this COVID year has been interesting. And, and I, I think we've got a lot of, pent up energy uh, for this next season. It's not long because we just finished the spring season, but the guys are, uh, I think we're bigger. I think we're, we're uh, just physically size wise, the presence of our team has really changed. And uh, I used to laugh because we would, we would look at the national anthem and I would, I would be looking at UNLV as we're going across the players. And then I would look at the referees who are a little bit taller than my players. And then I'd look at the other team and I'd say, oh boy, we're in for it now. But I think uh, the group that we have right now is, is big and strong. Uh, we're going to really take a, a lot of pride in defending. Uh, shutouts are going to be a huge part of who we're going to be as, a, as our identity, I think, this year. Uh, be relentless in, in, in trying to get to goal. Uh, restarts are going to be big on both sides of the ball. Um, so I think it's going to be a fun team to watch, but I, I, we're going to be stingy in giving up goals. And Jenny, you just finished your first season. Um, talk about what you're looking forward to, what the fans can expect uh, in year two this fall. Yes, we are returning so many hungry players. I use that word because um, because they are. We The last day happened and they were already texting me like, what's next? What can we do? So the hunger is there, which is really exciting. Um, we're returning players, which means they're gonna be that much more mature. We're developing leaders within the group, which is very exciting. Um, our, I want to attack so much that we never defend. And I want to be in the opponent's half constantly. And um, I'll tell you what was so special this season was we did get some fans at our home games. And you all four can attest to this. There is nothing more magical than playing on that field under those lights and with those fans. And we were successful each game at home. And that's a huge part. So we want to reward our community. They, those, those players know they will, similar to all of you, they will sweat, they will bleed, they will die on that field for this community. So that's what you'll see from the women's program and no doubt the men's program as well. Well, obviously we hope that we will be back to 100% uh, capacity for fans in the fall. Um, and looking forward to both teams playing. So just wanted to thank all of you for coming out today. Um, thank you for participating. Um, I'm sure our fans loved hearing all your stories and getting the chance to visit with you again. And just to remind all the UNLV fans out there, this is again part of the Rebel Caravan. Uh, we have events every day through May 23rd. So just continue to follow us on social media at UNLV Athletics um, or on the website at UNLVRebels.com. Um, so once again, thanks for coming out. and. Um, we hope to see you at our games in the fall. And to our players on the call, good luck to all your games this summer. 
Um, Denali, when you do return back to your team, good luck overseas as well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone, very much.